Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, July 27th. So today we have the moon in this Aries energy that has been void since yesterday evening, 6.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 26th. The moon has been void. Things have been shaky. Things have been unstable. Things have been uncertain. And of course, that's just kind of the vibe in the cosmos as of right now. However, this very long period that the moon has been void is just amplifying all of those things. We are going to see the moon shift into the Taurus energy at 1.23 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. And we are building towards the last quarter moon taking place in this Taurus energy at five degrees, which will be popping off late this evening. That will be the last aspect of the day. And of course, the last quarter moon is a realization, a revelation, an aha moment. We've watched certain topics and themes and storylines and timelines reach a climactic point. Suddenly now there's an ending point. There's an elimination. There's a closing of the door, closing of the chapter. This last quarter moon, any last quarter moon, is about reflecting back over the past month, really kind of seeing the highs, the lows, the everything in between, processing what is working for us, what isn't working for us, who and what needs to stay, needs to go. And in Taurus energy, this is about us kind of finding a new level of self-worth, self-value within ourselves, really understanding what we really are passionate about, what we really desire, what would make us feel safe and secure, what would make us feel happy, a sense of joy, a sense of pride, and realizing what needs to be done in order to accomplish and achieve those particular things. Now, it's a fixed earth sign, this Taurus energy that we're about to move into, which means that this is stabilizing energy. We're not really taking action and making many moves as much as we are standing still and taking a good look around. We look back at the past, figuring out how it is that we've gotten here. We're taking a look at the present moment, what we could do differently, what we should be doing differently in order to create a different result. We're taking a look at the potential futuristic path and direction that we could be taking and trying to evaluate whether or not that is going to make us feel more safe and secure and stabilized in our physical realm, whether it's going to put us in a better position or whether or not where it is that we're currently at, we're just hella confused and therefore still kind of feeding off the old version of self, those old karmic chapters and not being able to see the forest past the trees. There's going to be a lot of revelations popping off here today. The energy is definitely going to be shifting as we move into that Taurus energy. And then it's going to be amplified and intensified as we build towards that last quarter moon pop off at the end of the day. So with all of that being said, there are nine different aspects taking place here today. All nine involve the moon, which means that this is a moon day. A moon day is a time for us to emotionally refine where it is that we're at. Saturdays are ruled over by Saturn. Saturn does bring a seriousness, a somberness, a reality check, if you will. And we are definitely going to feel the weight, the responsibility weighing upon us in order to figure our shit out. Okay, so... We're jumping into this day with the moon, who is still in this Aries energy, has been void, of course, coming up to, bumping into, teaming up with, conjuncting Chiron, the wounded healer who just went retrograde. Okay, so conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. What is ending is our ability to sweep problematic things under the rug. Chiron is now retrograde, meaning if you haven't listened to the Astro Forecast, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you haven't busted out your Leo season e-guide to capture what's going on for you at this present time, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you haven't listened to your July Zodiac Forecast, your sun, your moon, your rising, I'm definitely going to recommend you do that so that you understand where all of these particular energy shifts are taking place in your own individual life. The ending point 
is that now that Chiron is retrograde, we have the mood and the attitude where we want to fix things. We want to heal. We want to resolve things. We're tired of the bullshit. We're tired of the pain. We're tired of the trauma. We're tired of the repetitive nature of doing the same old, same old thing. And of course, getting the same old, same old result. So the mood, the attitude is definitely shifted. More war willing to take a good look at ourselves, especially our mental health, especially our physical health, our emotional and spiritual health as well. We are more apt to identify, guess what? This part of me doesn't feel so hot, doesn't feel so good, doesn't feel so strong. Instead of, you know, sweeping that to the side and putting our blinders on and ignoring it until problems fester because Chiron is now retrograde we're willing to kind of you know tackle these issues head on do something about it get in the mood and attitude where we're ready to grow up we're ready to evolve we're ready to be accountable and responsible for our own damn lives and that means addressing some of the problems some of the concerns so what's ending here is the emotional frustration and agitation of not feeling like we have control over anything, especially these, let's call it wounds and trauma out of the egoic programming that constantly has us making decisions and choosing certain situations that only amplify the not so nice parts of our inner realm. The beginning is that again, we're shifting in our mood and our attitude. The moon in Aries energy is the warrior type of spirit. Chiron going retrograde in this Aries energy is the warrior type of spirit to figure our shit out. So this is a beautiful interaction. However, because the moon is in a void, we're not as I'm going to say stabilized in being able to maintain and carry through this particular you know, no bullshit attitude momentum. We are going to feel that, you know, kind of energy rise and then it's going to fall off just as quick. Now, the moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. So this tells me that there is a little bit of clarity coming. It may not be much, but we are going to realize the areas of our lives in our physical realm that aren't working, that do not feel so good, that do not feel so great, that are not as strong as we need them to be. We're going to have illumination on what it is that we could do differently. That Uranian energy is going to download us with an insight, with an aha moment, with an epiphany that once you know, you can't unknow. And because this is Taurus energy, this has everything to do with the physical realm. The moon being in this Aries energy, even though he is void, again, has a little bit of, I'm going to say pep in our step, a little bit more fuel that we're adding to that inner fire in order to stay in the warrior type of mood and attitude and spirit to kind of make a change, to kind of realize where it is that we have to kind of, you know, get of our own damn way, make some changes, try something different and adopt a new way of looking at our lives to identify the problems so that we can fix them. The moon is then going to semi-square Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in Gemini energy, very divided on the options, the opportunities, the path, the direction that we currently have available for us to be walking in. We are weighing the pros and cons. We are doing the back and forth cha-cha-cha, but we're really undecided, uncertain on where we should be going from here. Because this is a semi-square, there is tension, there is conflict. What we are being illuminated to is the fact that the moon in Aries energy has no patience whatsoever. We just want to rush this decision so that we can say that we've made a choice, we've made a decision so that we can move into the planning and strategizing phase so that we can take action and make moves. That's all the Aries energy wants from us is to initiate something new. However, we cannot be rushing this. We have jumped timelines. We have jumped soul contracts. We have jumped storylines. We are not in the position, especially being in the year of eight, where it's about having power and control over our own damn selves. And patience is a necessity. As far as that is concerned, we have to boss up. We have to really kind of be a little bit more mature about these things. So this is a process that we cannot rush at this point. The urgency, the impulsivity to take action, make moves, to decide, to choose, to move on with it is overwhelming at this point. Jupiter, because he's not being aspected well, he's not bringing optimism, he's not bringing confidence in our choices, in our decisions. It is almost like a frustrated, like, oh, just pick it so we can get on with it type of vibe. And that is very destructive. We have to resist doing that at all costs. We have the moon 
and the final degrees now of this Aries energy, which means that we're going to be making an interaction with Neptune because Neptune is at the final degrees retrograde in Pisces energy. So the moon is going to be making a positive interaction with Neptune. This is going to give us an opportunity to kind of take a time out, to kind of step back, to kind of realize where it is that we are trying to kind of rush things, where we do have to have more patience, where we have to take a deep breath and kind of move within ourselves and really understand that our higher self has a greater, grander plan for us that we're not able to see right now, which requires us to have a certain amount of trust, of faith in ourselves, in the cosmos, in the greater, grander plan, which means that we need to calm our asses down. We have to stop trying to convince ourselves that we're behind, that we have to hurry up, that we have to make a change, that we have to make a choice, that we have to decide, that we have to just, you know, push the boundaries of where it is that we're currently at into foreign territory. Yes. The energy is there. We're supposed to be cultivating this energy in our inner realm. We're supposed to be, you know, fanning the flames so that we're going to have the momentum, the energy, the push power to continue to stay on the course when we bump into obstacles, when we bump into challenges. This particular interaction is a reminder that we have to remind ourselves what the greater, grander vision is. It is reminding us that we are in a stage right now where we have to understand that short-term sacrifice is going to lead into long-term gains. That requires patience. It requires maturity. And we have to avoid impulsivity and that urgency energy that is definitely coming at us. This is the point in time, 1.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to shift into that Taurus energy. And immediately we find the moon in this Taurus energy, which by the way, you're going to feel like you hit a brick wall. It's going to feel heavy and weighted because we are being a little bit more drawn to being in this present moment, aware of our five senses, aware of our physical form, aware of our mental and emotional disposition. That Taurus energy needs to ground us and anchor us in this present moment so that we can take a lay of the land so that we can kind of gain our bearings. It is a fixed sign. It is stabilizing energy. And the Taurus energy is taking a good look at our physical realm. And so it feels like we're hitting a little bit of a wall here because that Aries energy that we've been in has been a little bit bouncy. It's been a little bit chaotic. We've been all over the place. It's highly stimulating energy. The Taurus energy, no, we got more chill. We have the patience. We have the discipline to stand still but it does come at us like a ton of bricks. So we are going to need to adjust to that. Anywho, the moon in Taurus gets into the boxing ring, fights it out, squares off with Pluto. Pluto's the great transformer. He's retrograde in Aquarius energy. We get this square because the fixed sign of Taurus and the fixed sign of Aquarius energy, they're, you know, they're squaring off with each other. They're at a 90 degree with each other, which means that we are experiencing some growing pains. Those growing pains are definitely felt in the physical form with those ascension symptoms. Again, take a listen to the forecast. Um, but we are also seeing the growing pains in our ability to understand that we are resisting some changes, that Aquarius energy that Pluto is retrograde in wants us to see the bigger, broader picture here, wants us to focus on the areas that we can improve, that we can do better in, where we can kind of free ourselves from some of the ruts in which we've been in. The Taurus energy, on the other hand, even though we've been wanting change, even though we've been praying for change, we do kind of resist change for all it's worth. And so we're kind of digging in our bull horns and hooves, if you will. We're putting our head down. We're kind of huffing and puffing here because we don't want to make a move. We don't want any change. We want to stick to what is tried, tested, and true. And we want to find the happiness, the joy, the comfortability, the familiarity in our present moment in the here and now. So this is an intense emotional realization on where it is that we're the block, we're the problem. We're the ones actually, you know, preventing us from making the kind of progress that a part of us feels like we should have made as of right now. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Mercury. Mercury rules over the mental plane, rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury, although slowing down because he is in his pre-retrograde shadow period, is also in his rulership now in this Virgo energy which means that we're focused on the smaller details of our lives. We are focused on the problematic areas of our lives because the Virgo energy needs us to purify and cleanse thyself 
be very aware of the problematic areas, the issues at hand so that we can start fixing them. We can start thinking outside of the box, if you will, and understanding that the greater, grander vision of where it is that we would like to end up requires us to focus on the smaller details that we have power and control over here in this present moment, because it's those finer details in the run of our day to day life, what we focus on, what we pay attention to, what we pour into, what we spend our time doing, what we spend our time telling ourselves and our inner narrative that either makes or breaks our overall success in bringing the overall great big dream grand vision to life. The moon is our emotions. Mercury is our headspace. They're both in earth energies. This gives us our trine. This is a gentle nudge in the right direction. Our heart and our head, they're on the same page. The Taurus energy is very content at this particular juncture to stand still, be very present in the here and now, be very aware of our physical bodies, of our environment. Mercury, on the other hand, is zooming in on all of the aspects of our physical realms and we're analyzing it right to death. We're picking it apart. Could we do better here? Are we creating bad habits for ourselves? Could we look at it in a different way and therefore see it from a different perspective and therefore see different solutions that we haven't been able to see as of yet? Either way, there is this inventory that we are taking as of right now in our inner realm, in our outer realm on where it is that we're at, how we've gotten here and where it is that we would like to go from here. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations. He's retrograde, inner realm, internalized energy. In Pisces energy, this is about our belief system. This is about our faith. This is about our goals, our visions, our dreams, and understanding where it is that new boundaries, new structures need to kind of be built and created in our physical realms in order for us to actually start achieving obtaining the goals, the visions, the dreams that we're now kind of percolating on and wanting to manifest. But it all starts with the way that we believe in our goal, vision, and dream. And there's some old crud that we definitely have to eliminate. Now, Saturn is going to illuminate that to us. Our emotions are going to illuminate that to us. And with Mercury and Virgo energy, we are definitely going to be picking things apart, seeing things through a different lens. And this particular interaction is going to bring a little bit of a reality check. We have to be aware of our physical circumstances, how it is that we're thinking, how it is that we're feeling, how it is that we're interacting with the world, with the people around us to identify what is working, what isn't, because of course, that's the stage that we're in and figure out what we can do, what we can build, what we can create to make our lives just that much better. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars is the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire. He is also in Gemini energy, furthering the uncertainty, the divisiveness in our choices, our options, our path, our direction, our opportunities as of yet. Mars wants to take action and wants to make moves. But he's a little bit torn. One day he's pouring all of his time and energy into one particular area of life. The other day we're going the opposite direction. Just when we decide a choice point, an option, an opportunity that we want to expand upon, we go ahead, we pour into it. And then all of a sudden we're distracted by something else that is shiny, that is just as optimistic, that is just as appealing as what we were pouring into. So this is again, amplifying our indecision, amplifying the choice point, amplifying the decisions that we have to make on our plate as of right now. The moon interacting with Mars in this way is definitely going to, again, kind of fuel the fire, if you will. It's going to boost our motivation, boost our determination to kind of make a change, to see where it is that, yep, things are stuck in a rut to a certain degree, where it is that we're being called to build, to create, to bring something new to life. This is just, again, kind of adding to the inner spark, the inner flame that we have to kind of get to a raging fire before we're going to be gifted with the green light, go ahead to take action to make moves. But as long as we're cultivating this inspiration within us, this excitement within us, we're not going to fall short when we run into our first set of obstacles and challenges. 10.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
the moon in Taurus is going to get into the boxing ring square off with the sun in Leo energy. So of course, anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness on what we need, what we want, what we desire, or what we don't want, what we don't need, what we don't desire. Using that framework, we can figure out what it is that we would prefer instead. This is our last quarter moon pop off. We have the fixed earth sign of Taurus. We have the fixed fire sign of Leo. What we're getting here is we're understanding by taking the lay of the land and the Taurus energy on what we need to change, what we need to transform, what we need to build, what we need to create. The sun shining a bright light in Leo energy is illuminating our excitement, our inspiration, our passion for change. It's giving us the boldness, the bravery, the courage needed in order to do the hard thing, which happens to be the right thing, which happens to be, again, processing who and what needs to stay, needs to go. The fixed energy, of course, is illuminating where it is that we could make a change, but we're not ready to make a change because, again, we're holding on to dear life trying to keep things the same in this fixed energy yes it is a stabilizing energy for us to get a lay of the land on what we could change what we could do differently but we're just not ready to do it as of right now